Welcome and thanks very much for coming along to our webinar tonight on solar and batteries. Uh, my name is Nikki Chinyowski. I'm from the Mornington Peninsula Shire from the climate change team. And before we start, I'd just like to acknowledge and pay respects to the traditional owners, the Bunurong Boomerang people, the traditional custodians of these lands and waters. Uh, the Shire has partnered with the Australian Energy Foundation to deliver the solar and energy bulk buy, which is one of the many actions from our climate emergency plan that's aimed at supporting our community to uptake renewables and also to improve household energy efficiency. The program offers access to free energy advice from trained AEF staff and via webinars such as this one tonight. Uh, it also provides access to quality products from uh, vetted and experienced suppliers at discounted rates um, and assistance in gaining any sort of government rebates that might be available. And currently there are some very generous rebates through the state government for both solar and batteries. So tonight's webinar will be presented by Andrew Redaway, the uh, bulk buy manager at Australian Energy Foundation and also Anthony Williams from Eco Energy, who will discuss the specific uh, solar and battery products that are available through this program. So if you do have any questions, if you could please um, post them in the little Q&A area there at the bottom of your screen rather than the chat, that just makes it a little bit easier for us to answer. You'll probably get your answers a little bit sooner too. Uh, so I'll hand over to Andrew for the presentation now. Thank you, Nikki. Um, so for, for tonight, um, uh, we've got a, a fairly full agenda. Um, we, we've got one and a half hours, which is a, a bit more than we've had for a couple of our, our other um, webinars that we've um, have been running in, in this session. Uh, oh yes, sorry, Nikki, I don't think I showed your, um, your slide. So I'll just put this up for a few seconds now. Um, so, so Australian Energy Foundation, we've, uh, we're a not-for-profit organisation that's been around since 2020. And we um, obviously work in climate change area, uh, renewable energy, uh, energy efficiency, uh, and helping vulnerable consumers as well. So, so with the bulk buy program, um, Nick has already given a great sort of quick intro to it. So thank, thank you for that. Um, the, the products that we've got, um, uh, I should have actually added on a picture of a battery as well here, because that's, that's the, um, the fourth product that we're uh, introducing to the uh, bulk buy in this webinar. So, so we're just launching that now. And, and, and there's actually two batteries that, that we'll be uh, talking about that we've got on offer at the moment. Um, but as Nikki mentioned, we're, we're helping you with um, uh, uh, trusted suppliers, and the idea is to have a more comfortable home and savings on, on your energy bills. And we have all the advice. We, we've got a team of advisors that um, uh, can help you through that process, um, which is all free for um, uh, ratepayers in uh, residents in Mornington Peninsula Shire. And, and uh, yeah, we're the first port, port of call. So you, you come to us first and then we would help you through the process with the suppliers. Uh, yeah, so we're overseeing and evaluating the, the suppliers. Um, uh, th this is one of the advantages of coming through the bulk buy is that you can be confident that you won't be caught out by um, cowboys in, in the market. Um, there, there, there have been some uh, media articles, especially around solar. So um, eco energy is certainly not, not in that category. Um, and yeah, um, you can see the points at the bottom, what you'd expect, um, high quality installations, warranties, and um, uh, quotes would be after site visit, which is not always the case in the solar industry. All right, so the first technology I was gonna talk about is solar, but let's do a quick poll first, just to get some, uh, 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 participant interaction in, in the system. So, so the question is, what, what size solar system do you have on your roof, which has an option for uh, no solar yet? So, 
So the size of solar systems that are being installed now, like the, the standard sort of package that you see advertised is often an 18 panel solar system, somewhere around that size. Um, in rate of kilowatts, that would be 6.6 .6 kilowatts is a, is a sort of a sweet spot. Um, but uh, that's gone up over time. So if you go back 10 years, um, then there were a lot of, you know, one, 1 1.5 kilowatt systems being installed. But um, nowadays people would normally only go with such a small system if, um, if they've got um, like uh, a limited um, sunny roof area, for example. Um, it's, most people go with bigger systems these days. All right, um, I'll end the poll. Ah, there we go. Um, so the results, we're, we're seeing 59% um, uh, don't have solar yet. And, and then there's a, a spread. And yeah, um, uh, small systems and big systems and a, and a smaller number of uh, sort of medium-sized systems there. So that, that's probably what I would expect. Um, so if you still got that up on your screen, you can just uh, close that window with the X on the top right-hand corner. All right, so how does solar work? Um, so if you've got solar installed, then as a normal uh, system in, in the suburbs, then, then you still have a cable going out to your, your poles and wires in the street. Um, so that's on the right-hand side of the image here. You, you've got your smart meter, your, which does the billing with, with your um, electricity retailer. Um, you, you've got a switchboard on, on your house with, with those safety switches, those circuit breakers that, that you can uh, flick on or off to uh, control different appliances in your house. So, so that's all normal. Everyone would have that on their home. Um, so if you're installing solar, then you're obviously putting solar panels on the roof. And there's also this gadget called an inverter on, on the wall, which changes the electricity coming from the panels into the correct type to be used in the, in the house and, and for sending out to the grid which is how it works. So um, at any time, your appliances have the first use of the electricity coming out of your solar system. And if there's an excess after, above what your appliances are using, that excess gets sent out to the grid, fed into the grid. And uh, you earn a bit of money for that. Um, and on the other way around, if there's a shortfall, if, 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 you, if it's cloudy and, and you're running some high powered appliances, then um, that shortfall will be covered by uh, inputs from the grid. And, and that just happens automatically. Um, so there's actually a price difference and, and there's reasons for this, but I probably won't get into it unless we, we get a few questions about it. But um, when, when you're importing electricity from the poles and wires in the street, you're paying usually around 17 to 26 cents or uh, depending if it's peak time, it could be higher than that to, if you're on a uh, time of use tariff. Um, but when you're feeding electricity into the grid, um, there's a minimum of eight cents per kilowatt hour. And, and that, that varies with um, like from year to year, um, the Essential Services Commission in Victoria set, sets a minimum rate um, each year and based on uh, the price of electricity in the wholesale market and a couple of other factors. So, so the implication of this is when it's sunny and you've got electricity coming out of your solar system, then it's a good idea to use that by running your appliances when it's sunny. So things like washing machines or dishwashers. If you've got a pool, then you definitely want to have your pool pump running around the middle of the day. If you've got electric hot water, oops, sorry. About that if you've got electric hot water then yeah same thing um uh you you may be better off running it in the middle of the day if you've got solar than um in in the middle of the night which is the more traditional way um the economics of solar uh yeah it's normally a great great economics um um it, it, the the prices of systems have come down so much over the last 10 years it's not funny um and most households are seeing that they can get a payback time within four to seven years. Um, so some people say that and think, oh, well, that's actually quite a long time. Like, oh, I don't want to wait, wait four to seven years to get my money back um, through, through bill savings. But if you compare that, like if you convert that 
pay back time into uh, financial measures and compare it against um, like a financial investment, like um, some sort of low risk uh, interest bearing account or um, uh, paying down your mortgage even, um, it would normally uh, be, uh, be a lot better. Um, you'd, you'd, you'd be better off having your, having, investing your money and putting a solar system on the roof. And then by the time you pay it back, you'll, you'll be ahead of what you would have been if you put, put your money in a uh, low risk financial investment. But obviously talk to a financial um, uh, advisor or um, counselor about those issues. Um, but yeah, the, the economics are quite compelling. And, and also, because you're getting your, your returns in the form of bill savings, there's normally no tax implications for that. Like you're not paying income tax on a bill saving, like, like what you might if you, if you were getting returns off, a, off some financial investment. Um, yeah, and, and it's, it's a good way to insulate yourself against potential future um, electricity price rises in, in, in the future. Um, it does vary. So obviously if you've got a, um, a massive tree over your roof, then uh, solar might not be for you. Um, and yeah, where the panels can be placed. So north facing is, is great for, for year round generation, um, but east and west actually, if, if, if you've got you know, one side of your roof facing east and one side facing west, then, then these days that's actually a pretty good option um, because it's not going to generate so great in winter when the sun's low in the sky and the angles onto the panels aren't, aren't so good. Um, but the rest of the year, um, you'll, you'll have the morning sun shining nicely on your, on your east facing panels. And then the afternoon sun will, will be shining nicely on your, um, on your west facing. So, uh, that cor correlates well with um, when a lot of households are using electricity. They, they normally have a bit of a peak, peak in the morning and a peak in the afternoon. I, I think I might have just uh, explained a slide coming up. But um, yeah, the, the economics are normally quite good. Uh, yeah, so uh, to help you use um, appliances during solar time, you can get uh, time delay switches and air conditioning. Uh, if, if you're really um, uh, in touch with all the latest gadgets, there, there are home automation systems that you can do as well. Um, and the other big one is, is hot water. So th there's a few ways that, that you can, if you've got an electric hot water system, either the old fashioned type or the heat pumps that, that we also have as part of this bulk buy, then there's a few ways that you can um, get your, your um, hot water working nicely with your solar. The, the simplest is just a timer to, to run it around the middle of the day. Um, if you're interested in that, then um, yeah, um, maybe um, consider coming along to one of our next webinars where we go into those um, uh, hot water systems a bit more and the air conditioning as well. Okay, so, so the solar options, um, uh, we've actually got quite a few available in the bulk buy. I've, I've, I've just I've just put some of the basic options here in the um, in the slide, and I might pass over to Anthony to talk to this one. Thanks, Andrew. Hi, everybody. My name's Anthony from Eco Energy, and of course, we're really pleased to be involved with the program with the council. Um, I'm an extra mana person. I wish I was down there right now. It was just the greatest place. So in the program, we've got three indicative prices here for three different system sizes. And, and realistically, all day long, we are, we, we are providing quotes for system sizes like this. And it's usually determined you know, by available roof space. Everybody wants a 6.6 .6 kilowatt system for the, for the amount of energy that it produces and the relief on the billing. But these are three typical systems that we, we are involved in all the time. And, and one of them will be it'll be based around, you know, the size of the systems are sometimes determined by your average daily usage on your billing uh, or, again, your available roof space. Um, and so the first one, uh, in all three of them, it's using the Trina Honey panels. Uh, Trina, the Trina Honey series is a high efficiency uh, a panel at 20.7%, which is just behind the market leaders at the moment. Yeah, high output at 370 watts. It's, it's an all-black anodized frame. It's been a real big hit in the solar market in the last 12 months. 
So yeah, obviously 10 panels makes the system 3.7 kilowatts. Um, and the, the inverter that we use for that is a brand called Solus. Solus is a company that we've been working with for just over 11 years now. Um, they're a dedicated solar inverter manufacturer only. They don't do any other products. Um, and the size of the system and the inverter are matched together. So typically, you know, 3.7 kilowatt sedge system, it's a three kilowatt inverter. Um, next one we've got is 5.1 uh, kilowatts for 14 panels. Again, it's a really popular system size for people sometimes with one or two people who live together and aren't big consumers of electricity. Um, it typically provides a really great, a really great result that we see in, in, in their post installation billing. Um, and then, of course, there's the 6.6 the, the kilowatt system, which is um, a favourite. It's a favourite in the solar industry because it's also a size that's determined by the networks. And so each network will have rules about what, you, what size inverter that you can have as a maximum size based on whether you've got single phase supply or three phase supply at the metre. So, uh, for example, in my network, um, on a single phase metre, I'm allowed to have a five kilowatt inverter, a maximum size. Um, a solar inverter works a third beyond its capacity. So five times a third is 6.6 .6 kilowatts. Um, and that's, that's a system you see go in consistently uh, in homes all the time. 6.6 .6 kilowatts is expected to sort of produce around 13 to 16 kilowatts a day in the middle of winter. Um, in summertime, conservatively around 26 to 31 kilowatts uh, a day and sometimes beyond that. And um, people who've got system sizes like that typically start saving somewhere between 65, sometimes 70% on their billing. So just uh, there's a number of factors that determine that saving. Also, there's a note there you'll see on the slide that says extra solar sizes and options too. So obviously we can quote for larger systems or smaller systems. Um, and we've got a range of options uh, that can always be added into that People might be looking for consumption monitoring off the solar system and so forth. So that's how we've broken this down. Yeah, great. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Anthony. Yeah. One one other thing I might just add is um, uh, the other panel and and uh, inverter options are uh, more a bit more towards the uh, the premium end of of the scale. So. Um, uh, the reasons why someone might might choose to pay a bit more for a more premium product, um, it usually just comes down to if if you really want the highest um, confidence in in a really long uh, lifespan uh, with, without any hassles, then you you might go for for the premium brand. Um, but yeah, the 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 trainers um, are really good panels. Um, I, I've I've actually got got trainers on on my own roof from 2011. Um, so obviously they're a different product I mean, because the solar industry's uh, um, advanced so fast, so so quickly since then. But um, yeah, those panels are still going great. So yeah, I'm happy with those. Um, solar sizing, I think I may have already covered this. Um, I, the one I didn't mention was if if one of your motivations for installing solar is to help the environment, um, especially from a uh, emissions point of view, um, reducing the amount of uh, coal that needs to get burned in the Latrobe Valley, then um, the, the bigger the better. So um, uh, with a grid connected system, uh, everything that you're generating, it's, it's, it's either offsetting your own consumption in, in, in the home or it's being fed into the grid and it's, being, um, it's going out to your neighbours and your neighbourhood and yeah, re reducing how much power has to come down uh, the, the cables from the Latrobe Valley. So um, that's another factor for some people. All right, rebates, we mentioned them a little bit. Um, the, the simple rebate is, is this one. Um, and so this is a, uh, it just applies on every solar system. You don't have to worry about eligibility or anything like that. So any, any quote that you get from a solar installer would, would include this rebate already built into it. And um, uh, it's slowly phasing out. So you can see on the chart here, we're in 2021. And uh, yeah, the solar industry is, has a reputation for being a bit of a solar coaster, like a roller coaster, um, as, as rebates have you know, jumped in and then dropped out. You, you get these massive booms of boom and bust sort of dynamic. So, 
So having a rebate that actually is gradually winding down is is great. I, I, I wish we had more of those schemes that were uh, designed a bit more intelligently like that. Um, yeah, the, the 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 rationale behind it is it's um, it's an industry support scheme basically. Um, uh, in the early days, uh, solar was expensive, and um, it, it was it was a good idea to 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 provide a rebate, um, so some uh, support to um, get get those economies of scale in the market. Um, now we've got that, it, it it does sort of make sense to to start phasing that down. And then the state, the Victorian state government jumped in and added another rebate. <laughs> uh, politicians they want to do these sorts of things um, so it's it's great if you're buying solar uh, I mean even without this rebate solar is a good deal and, and if you add this on as well then it can be a ridiculously good deal so um, it, they're providing $1,400 um, unless you had a really small system you, you might not get quite that much and on top of that you you can also get an interest-free loan um, so it's possible to, to get a solar system with, um, you know, uh, pay, pay nothing up front, basically, um, and pay back over four years. There are eligibility criteria for this. And, um, yeah, it can be tricky for some, especially farmers. Like if, if, if they, they, they may, um, have massive debt, <laughs> but, um, the, the, the value of their property might, um, exclude them from, um, being able to uh, claim this rebate, which is a uh, maybe a bit of a flaw in the um, in the design of the scheme, um, and yeah, you can see the other criteria down there. And I think later on in the in the presentation, we'll we'll, we'll have a link to the um, the Solar Victoria website with with all of the details, or you can you can call up our energy advice team and they'll help you out. Uh, and yeah, it can also uh, work for renters as well. So um, I won't go through all the details on this slide, but um, yeah, just just be aware of that, which 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 is a really good um, a good uh, initiative, because up until now it has been pretty tricky for for renters to get solar on the roof, um, because it's normally the landlord that has to pay for them, but then it's the renter that gets the bill savings. So um, how do you negotiate that? Yeah. Uh, and here's, here's the process for, for the solar for, for, for rentals. So you can either do it through a landlord renter co-contribution or a no renter contribution. Um, and, and there's an agreement there. So yeah, solar, solar.vic.gov.au slash solar rebates. Okay, the, um, I think this is the last slide I included about solar, but um. Uh, a lot of you may have seen in the media um, talk about the, um, the solar tax, uh, or the sun tax. Um, so it's, it's actually not as big of a deal as some of the articles have made out. Um, so this, this is a determination that's been made by the rule maker in the energy market, the Australian Electricity Market Commission. Um, and, and really what they're saying is that in, in the future, after 2025, they're going to allow the, uh, the poles and wires companies like around the Mornington Peninsula, that's um, United Energy. Um, they're going to allow them to um, structure new plans. So um, you've got uh, your, your plan with your retailer and, and part of that is, is a cost that's fed through from, the, um, from United Energy. And so, so what they're saying is, United Energy will be allowed to include a plan that um, has a, a charge for that apply only to people with solar and not to people without solar. So it sounds pretty bad, but um, it's a long way off. It'll, it, there won't be any change until 2025. And then uh, they're going to have to provide uh, option, options for, for your plan. So if you've got solar, you, you'll have a plan which, which um, pays the, um, this, this extra charge, or you'll have an uh, option for a plan which doesn't pay the extra charge, but there may be a limit to, to uh, the amount of power that you can export out to the grid. So instead of being able to export five kilowatts, you, you might only be able to export four kilowatts or three kilowatts. Um, 
there's no details around any of this um, because it's 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 up to the it's up to United Energy to to come up with their proposed plans and and then to negotiate with them with the regulator in, in the electricity market. So so there is that check and balance there with, with the with the regulator, um, but it doesn't seem that it's going to become be a massive um, cost anyway if if it does actually happen. And and the other good thing about it is. Um, that's only part of the, uh, the determination by the AEMC. They've, they've also put some really good things in there, like, like saying that United Energy will actually have to keep track of, of how much solar gets wasted. Like at the moment, um, there, are, there are solar panels that um, actually get choked back because the, um, just at times when it's, when it's really sunny and, and people aren't using much electricity, because United Energy's poles and wires in the local area can't can't accept all, all that power getting fed in, so in future they're actually going to have to manage that and and report back to the regulator and be held to account for it, which which is a good thing. All right, um, we're about to move on to batteries, so let's do another poll. Okay, so why are you interested in a battery? Um, and there's also an option for, I'm not interested in a battery. Okay, we've got, 30 answers already. So I think uh, that's the, that's how many we're gonna get. Um, so, so that's really interesting. Um, the highest number is for um, an, uh, economical bill savings, but after that, there's a mix of um, grid independence, helping the energy transition and uh, having, having some uh, backup when you have a grid blackout. So that's, uh, that's quite interesting. All right. All right, so how do batteries work? All right, so if, if we look at this, uh, these two blue humps here, th this is a typical um, uh, household uh, energy pattern. Obviously it's, it's smoothed out, like uh, real energy consumption is very spiky as you flick appliances on and off, but there's, there's often a peak in the morning and a peak in the evening. Um, which sort of doesn't coincide nicely with, with your solar peak, which is in the middle of the day. So um, when you're just using a battery in a normal way in a you know day-to-day -day operation, um, what the battery does is it'll it'll um, recognize that you're you're about to export the sun's come up and it's it's producing a bit of power and you're about to export electricity out to the grid. And I'll say, oh, okay, well, I'll charge myself up then. I'll, I'll, I'll use that, that power or at least some of that power and, and I'll, I'll charge myself up. So you're, you're, you're taking advantage of, of that energy around the middle of the day and then sun goes down, um, the, the battery recognises, oh, we're, we're about to start importing from the grid. Well, I've, I've got, I've got um, electricity available, so, so I'll start discharging to supply the, the appliances or at least some of them uh, at least some of that power uh, so, so, so it's uh, discharging in the evening so, so it's um, uh, covering a portion of your or depending on the size and the power of the battery um, uh, potentially all of your your um, uh, energy from from the evening through the night so so that's how that would work ideally um, there is a lot of variability though so one is if it's a really cloudy day um, and, and if you're using a fair bit of electricity yourself with your appliances um, directly from the solar, then the battery might not get an opportunity to fully charge. There, there may not be enough um, excess um, energy to, to uh, fill the battery right up. Um, so, so, so the battery is not fully charging, then uh, you're not getting that, that full benefit on, on those days. 
The other one would be if, if you get a day when you're uh, not at home, which is pretty rare at the moment with lockdowns, but um, um, if, if you're out or you, you, you go out for dinner or uh, those sorts of things, then you may not actually use all of the energy which has been stored up in the battery. So, I mean, that's fine, but, 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 but again, you're, you're not getting that, that full benefit out, out of the battery um, because it'll, it'll also start the next day already partially charged. So it won't be able to soak up as much um, excess solar as it would have otherwise. So when you see these sorts of patterns or if you see uh, an analysis, which, which assumes that if, if you've got a battery that it's gonna be fully cycling every day, and that's probably not realistic. Um, what we're seeing from, from users is um, if, if they had a battery with a capacity of 10 kilowatt hours, then um, probably the best they'd be getting on average is maybe cycling say seven or eight kilowatt hours of that per day and maybe less. All right, so reasons to install batteries. Um, and get more energy independence. So that's a sort of a vague term, but but it, it just means that your more of your power that you use in home in your home is coming from your own solar generation. Um, backup power. So um, some solar some battery systems are able to do this more than others. Um, so if you're getting a battery uh, system, then this is a question you really should be asking anyone who's providing a quote is. Uh, can it provide power? Um, is it going to be instantaneous? Like if, if I'm running a desktop computer and I'm in the middle of a computer game or a webinar or something, is, am I going to lose that if, if, the, um, if, if I have a brief blackout? Or is it just going to power right through and um, seamlessly change over from uh, you know, grid power to, to battery power? Um, Another one is uh, what, what circuits or how much power can it actually provide? Um, there are some batteries that are very capable that, that can provide, can power most of your house. You, you probably wouldn't want to run like a, you know, a whole house ducted air conditioning system off the battery or, or maybe not an oven or um, some of those, or hot water system maybe. Um, but the, 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 some, some batteries can, can run most of your house. Um, others are more limited in, in what they can run. And the third question you might want to ask is, um, if I have a blackout um, in, at night, for example, um, and it's an extended blackout that lasts for a day or more, when the sun comes up the next day and it's still blacked out, um, is my battery system going to be able to charge up from the solar? Um, and some of them can, some of them can't. Some depend on, on how it's configured, how, how the solar is wired in and, and what's the level of, like how many panels you've got, or what the power is compared to the battery. So yeah, um, you, you, if you're getting a battery system, then, then you really wanna ask those questions and be, be comfortable with the answers uh, to not have a surprise when, when, when that blackout does come and, it's not doing what you thought it would. Okay, third reason would be to part of, be part of Australia's sustainable future. Um, so the thinking there is, um, if our, our electricity system's getting more and more renewables in it, so mostly wind and solar, and uh, the projections are that um, they're, they're gonna be the majority of, of the energy supply in the future. And, maybe 100%. Um, uh, the Australian Energy Market Operator has an integrated system plan that goes out to 2040. And yeah, they're, they're looking at, at scenarios which, which have a very high level of wind and solar in the grid. So if that's the case, then we're obviously gonna to need to have energy storage in, in the system as well. Because you know there are times when the sun doesn't shine and the wind's not blowing much. Um, uh, and you actually do need a lot of energy storage. Um, uh, so that's why we're seeing, um, you know, large scale storage going into the system like Snowy Hydro 2.0, which is very significant. And um, also some smaller things like, like, the, like the big batteries, which are, which are going in around the grid. Um, 
So if, if that's a future that we want to support, then we can sort of do our bit by, by inst installing some energy storage ourselves. Um, probably the thing to be aware of there is that in, in Victoria, we, we don't need that much storage just yet in the, in the electricity grid. If you look at the lifespan of a battery, uh, you're looking at 10 to 15 years probably. Um, around 2025, 2026, that's when Snowy Hydro 2.0 comes in. So, so that's probably going to um, supply a fair bit of our energy storage needs for a while. Um, so by the, by the time that the electricity grid really needs a lot of new energy storage, that might be around the time if you buy a battery now, then it might be wearing out. But it, it all depends on how fast this transition happens. I mean, if, if um, we, as a, as a country, um, really did and decide to transition super fast and close down coal-fired power stations early, then yeah, um, the, the more energy storage, uh, the faster the better, basically. Um, another one would be if you're on a remote property and you're installing an off-grid solar system, um, usually th this is people who have just, just bought a, a, a bush block and, and they, they, they want to install a house there and they go, oh, okay, United Energy, how much will it cost to um, uh, get, get the poles and wires extended to, to, to put a grid connection into, into the house? And they come back with a quote of 30,000 or 80,000 or something like that, which uh, dollars, which, which um, is, is realistic in a lot of cases. That's, um, we're, we're seeing people who, who, who are in that sort of situation. And so, so then, um, uh, putting in an off-grid system instead and avoiding that cost um, is a bit of a no-brainer. Now, the one that I haven't included here is economic bill savings. And, and the reason for that is um, they're actually not that... Um, the, the bill savings that you get um, are not necessarily economic. So if you're putting in a solar system, then you're, you're already cutting your, your, um, your bills down by quite a lot. Um, the battery is an op optional add-on on, on top of that solar system. So if you're looking at the economics, you, you should always be considering, well, what economics would I get from just the solar alone? And then what would the economics be if I paid for a battery as well on top of that? And um, the additional bill savings you get are usually not that massive from a battery. So just to give you an idea, it could be few hundred dollars extra bill savings, $500 extra. Um, if, if you happen to use a lot of electricity um, and you've got a big solar system and you're paying fairly high uh, rates on, on, your, on, your, on your bills and all, if all those factors line up, then you might be saving extra $700 or somewhere around that from, from a battery per year. Um, so if you compare that to the cost of the battery, then, then the payback time is actually quite long and it's unlikely to pay for itself within the warranty period. So, so for most people, the, the, the bill saving side of it is, it's part of it, but, but um, it's, it's hard to justify spending that money on a battery purely for bill savings. You, 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 you'd be wanting to, you'd want to get some additional benefit uh, from that either either um, the, the backup power, if that's important to you, um, uh, or, or to um, help that sustainable grid as well. Another thing to think about with batteries is where you can put them. So there's an Australian standard that came out a year or so ago um, uh, for specifically for, for these types of solar batteries. And um, that's, uh, yeah, it was a long process. Um, Previously, there wasn't a, a proper standard for these types of batteries. It was it was more designed for, you know, the old lead acid batteries in an off grid situation type thing. So, so the new standard is um, uh, it's the the original drafts of it were very restrictive, um, uh, but after some pushback, um, it's still reasonably restrictive. Um, you you basically need a fairly broad uh, section of wall without anything in that area, either windows, gas bottles, air conditioners, hot water tanks, anything like that. Um, and 
if, if it's a weatherboard wall on the and, you, and you've got the, the living room or a bedroom on the other side, then um, the installer will have to put a fairly thick um, layer of cement sheeting on, on the wall as well. And uh, the reason for that is because some, some types of batteries, uh, let's say there was a, a house fire happened somewhere else and the battery got caught up in it, then they can burn pretty well. Um, so the, the, the standards are, are quite, um, quite conservative about that. And um, so finding a place to put the battery, yeah, is, is something that you want to think about <laughs> um, before you, you commit to one, basically. Um, this, this picture here, um, it's, it's one of the batteries that um, are included in the bulk buy. It's just a slightly different variant of it. Um, yeah, and the, the guy there is uh, uh, Glenn Morris, who's uh, actually a bit of a guru in, in the industry. He, he, he runs a um, uh, energy smart lab um, up, up near Healesville. All right, so let's get into the actual battery options and prices. So I'll hand over to Anthony again. Hi, everybody. Back again. Um, so at the moment, we've got two battery solutions that we use at work. Alpha ESS, uh, which is a new product for us. Um, it's a modular battery system uh, going up to 9.1 kilowatts. It is modular, so you can start with a smaller battery and then add to it uh, and increase the storage capacity. Um, one of the interesting things about Alpha is they're, they're kind of thinking about people who have long-term outages. And so it's also compatible with things like diesel generator as well, if you need extra power to to, to keep the home running in an extended blackout. Um, you can see the picture of Glenn in the previous slide. It, it's, it's, very, it's a very compact system, it's quite tall. Um, it has excellent monitoring capabilities as well. Um, and, and we typically, for the, for the bulk buy special for what we're doing with the Peninsula customers, it's sitting at $10,882 um, after the special bulk buy discount. Um, and then of course, we've got the Tesla Powerwall 2. Tesla is um, one of the market leaders in battery storage. It's an unusual product. It, it does a few very clever things. It's an enormous battery at 13.5 kilowatts. It's quite compact in that it's almost like the size of a large suitcase, but quite thin as well. Um, it, looks, it looks very well when it's mounted on a wall. Uh, it, does, it does some unusual things in that if you have a, a situation where you've got a long-term, uh, an extended blackout, it can island your house and keep the solar system going and create a continual loop. Um, it has extraordinary monitoring capabilities as well. It's, it's, it's very, very popular, but it is also one of the, the, the higher price batteries in the market. So it's, it's not something that we sell regularly, but there are certain customers with certain site specifics where it's very successful. Yeah, great. Um, if I can just ask one one question on that slide, Anthony. Um, yeah. So, so, so with the Alpha ESS, um, um, are, are you do you have options where you can install the solar at the same time and have the solar just feed directly into that battery? On that one, yeah. So we're talking. You're talking about the difference between a DC coupled solution and an AC coupled solution, right? Yeah, yeah. So. so um, that's that's been a challenge for us in the past to find something that's got that flexibility. Whereas, for example, Tesla will will bolt onto everything. It just it just consumes. It just it loves being part of the situation. But the, one of the reasons why we went with Alpha was because we can do um, AC and DC coupling. So you can do solar and battery, or you can retrofit it at a, to an existing solar system. Yeah, great. So. So, so if you're retrofitting it, then it's just wiring into your switchboard, right? Yeah, um, correct. Yeah. It's, it's not interacting directly with, with your existing solar. No, not at that stage, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah great. Okay, Th thanks a lot, Anthony. <laughs> oh, actually, uh, I might just clarify on that. So, 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 so the Tesla Powerwall um, is, is always AC coupled. So, so, so it's wiring in, into your switchboard. Yes. But, 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 but it's still, um, it still has that sensor in in the meter box, so so it knows when it when it should be charging and discharging. That, that's the gateway, yeah. So that's where where it, it's kind of like its separate brain that is is working for you behind the scenes or behind the switchboard. Yeah, cool. All right, um, join state governments. Also, um, I come to the party with some rebates on batteries. 
Um, so at the moment it's $4,174, but um, yeah, the, 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 there's a limit on the number of uh, systems at that price. So um, they're saying that, it, well, it looks like it's, it's gonna drop uh, pretty soon to the $3,500 mark. Um, uh, because there's not so many um, available uh, left at that at that higher rebate price. Um, so there's, there's some eligibility. One is that you already need to have solar um, with five kilowatts or greater. Um, so with, with current um, uh, size panels, that, like if it's installed recently, so you'd want, that's around 14 panels or so. Uh, if it was an old system, then you might need well over 20 panels uh, at, at the older, smaller uh, capacity to, to reach that five kilowatt rated capacity. So yeah, you, you, you need a decent sized solar system, which is actually not a bad idea if, if you're putting in a battery anyway, because otherwise there's gonna to be too many days when your, your panels aren't generating enough and because it's cloudy to, to, to fill up the battery. Uh, and yeah, then those, there's those other eligibility criteria on income and property um, uh, valuation, et cetera. And all the details are on the um, uh, SolarVic uh, website, or you can call us and get some free advice from our energy advisors. Um, batteries are a little bit complicated. Um, there, there's a lot of things to think about. Um, more so than just, just solar, I would say. Um, if you're just looking for a solar system, then um, it's a very mature product. Um, it's quite, uh, just as long as you've, you're dealing with, um, with a good uh, supplier and installer, then, um, and, you, and you've got some idea of what, what uh, products you're, you're working with, then it's, you normally wouldn't go too far wrong with, with, with a solar system. With, with a battery, you, you do have to be a bit more aware of you know, how the system works and um, how it's gonna work in a blackout and all those sorts of things. So yeah, it's good to do some research and we, we have a couple of um, uh, uh, guides uh, that are freely available off our website as well um, at this um, uh, address. Ah, yes. So, so even though our website, uh, even though this webinar is, is about solar and batteries, um, it's, uh, we thought it'd be good to also mention the other products which are available in, the, in our bulk buy, because many of you attending tonight, this would be, be the only webinar that you come to. So um, briefly, um, heat pump hot water. So uh, we, we have two, two brands. Um, uh, available in, in our bulk buy, one of which is the uh, Reclaim Energy, which we have in the picture on the bottom right here. So what is a heat pump hot water system? Well, it uses electricity to run, um, but only around a quarter as much electricity as the old style um, electric hot water systems. And it can do that because it works in a different way. Like the, the, the old style systems just have a heating element inside, like, like a kettle, an electric kettle. Um, with, with the heat pump hot water, they, they have a um, compressor unit, like a reverse cycle air conditioner. So uh, you can use a reverse cycle air conditioner to, to heat, your, heat your, um, your living room, for example. Um, with, with this system, it's, it's putting that heat into the water in the water tank instead of into your living room. And yeah, that, that works off a different principle. It's extracting heat out of the air, which it can do even if it's near freezing or freezing, uh, temperatures, temperatures outside. Um, and yes, so it uses a lot less um, electricity to, to uh, provide the same amount of heat into the water. Um, they are more expensive than, than a standard um, simple uh, electric hot water system. Um, but especially if you're using a fair bit of water, a uh, fair bit of uh, hot water, because you're, you're, you're taking a lot of showers or long showers, or you've got a high flow shower head or some combination of those, then um, that can work out pretty well economically and obviously help the environment. Um, and the other product we have in our bulk buy is um, air conditioners. So everyone's, uh, 
familiar with these. Um, uh, most, I think it's most homes now would, would have at least one. Um, so, so you've got your indoor unit and you've got your outdoor unit, um, probably down the side of the house somewhere. And, um, uh, but what, what a lot of people haven't caught up with is that they're actually the most uh, economic way to, to heat um, a living space these days. Um, so I'd recommend finding the heat button on, on your, your remote control. Well, we're sort of coming out of winter now, so <laughs> um, it's the wrong time to try this, but um, uh, next winter perhaps, um, for one cycle of uh, bills on, on your energy bills, uh, try using your, your, your split system air conditioner um, at those times when, when, you, um, when it's convenient, like um, maybe you don't need to heat the whole house all, all the time. If, if everyone's in, in the living room, then you could try just heating that space and uh, to turn off your whole house gas ducted um, heating and um, see, see how much your gas bill goes down and how much your electricity bill goes up. And you'll probably find out that you're ahead um, just, just as long as um, it's a reasonably modern uh, system. If, if, it was, if it was one of those old ones, square ones that go through the window, like or the hole in the wall, um, yeah, that's probably not the most efficient, but the, the modern ones are uh, very efficient. Yeah, up, up to 500%, as you can see there, which, which seems like it would break the laws of thermodynamics, but yeah, it's actually moving heat rather than converting electricity into heat. So yeah, it is possible. All right, um, I'd like to pass over to Anthony again to uh, explain a bit more about, about eco-energy. Oh, hi everyone, back again. So eco-energy, uh, we're part of a group called the ECHO Group. Um, we, we've been given the, you know, we've been ranked as one of the top national, top five solar installers nationally. Uh, we, we work predominantly in Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria. The bulk of our work is all in Victoria. Um, as, of, as of last year, um, my team, which is called Eco Energy, that's the re residential solar installation team. Uh, we were bought by Energy Australia. Um, and that the, the benefit of that for our customers is it gives them the, the customers a peace of mind and assurance um, that, that we're in it for the long haul and um, no, no poor practices, no pirates. Um, we, we're a very stable company. We've been working with customers like the Australian Energy Foundation for a long time, partnered up with the councils, which has been very successful for us. Um, the company goes back to 2007. It's had a it's had a couple of changes along the way, but as it is at the moment, the company has a residential solar team, which is me uh, and my, my teammates at work. We have a commercial solar team and then we've got a commercial LED company as well. Um, through the AEF, you know, they've done their due diligence, um, looking for a trusted solar company to partner with. Um, that's, where, that's where we've come in and that's where we're meeting you today. Um, we're also clean energy approved retailer, uh, and we have an in-house accredited installers that we use all throughout Metro, Metro Melbourne and, and regional Victoria. Um, we're, we've done over more than 200 of these bulk buy uh, programs now, and they've, they've been very successful for us. Gives us a chance to you know, meet lots of new people, talk about solar, talk about battery storage, and, and everything that's involved with that. Um, one of the great things that we, by having that partnership with Energy Australia is first and foremost for us is um, health and safety and, and the safety regulations that are around uh, a solar installation. Health and safety requirements for a solar installation have, have certainly changed and they are constantly being modified to make sure that, well, first of all, the installers are safe, the, the health of the roof is safe uh, and the ongoing success and uh, longevity of the system is also going to be um, always secured with a, with a great installation. So part of our process is not just about selling people uh, a, a solar system, it's also informing them and, and letting them know what's involved with a successful installation. And a lot of the costs within a solar quote are, are around uh, health and safety and installation. I think that's that, Andrew. 
your modeling experience. Um, so re recently we've been involved also in the CSR tree planting program. Um, the idea being that we do uh, one tree planted per installation. Uh, you get a certificate to acknowledge uh, your contribution and being part of the program as well. Um, and obviously this, this is a great incentive to, to be part of putting something back into the environment, getting more trees and producing more oxygen. Um, and, and it's something that we've already started doing and it's been really successful. Uh, also on that screen there, we've also got a, a, a partnership with uh, E360 Solar. One of the questions we get asked quite often, we, we meet a lot of homeowners who are uh, existing solar customers. They might've got a solar system that was installed 12, 15 years ago, and it's, and it's coming to the end of its life in some ways. Um, and they're looking to upgrade solar at their property. And, and we always get asked, um, how do I recycle the panels or, and, and related products? So the idea behind uh, E360 Solar is that you can, you can get damaged panels recycled or existing solar products that you've got at your property. Um, it's becoming more and more of a, a question because uh, you're, you're looking at early adopters that were part of solar programs 10, 12, 15 years ago and they're already looking to upgrade their system and go to higher efficiency panels and, and higher output panels. What's the next slide, Andrew? Uh, is, is that the one? No, we've gone through that one. Sorry. Oh, oh you've gone through that, okay. Yeah, so um, it, it's a recycling uh, of panels is, uh, is a question we get asked quite regularly. You can't just take them to the tip and, and throw them into the mix. Um, and also we've got the same questions now being asked, not a lot, but people do ask about what's the what's the life cycle of a, uh, of a battery. And, and again, how can that be recycled as well? So it, you will see more and more um, information about recycling products as well. It, it's it's no good being in the renewable energy industry and, and not having some sort of recycling program for these things. Um, rooftop solar is only um, increasing. It's, it's not going away, it's increasing and you're gonna see more and more situations where this, where this is really relevant. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot, Anthony, that was great. Um, sorry, I was a little distracted there. I was just trying to answer a question on the chat at the same time. Um, all right, so so the key takeaways from from our uh, uh, presentation tonight: um, have a plan for hot water. Um, think about an all electric home. Um, you 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 can probably see that um, I've neglected to update these key takeaways from from the previous webinar, which was about uh, hot water and. Um, and reverse cycle air conditioners. But these are actually still relevant um, if, if, because if, if you're installing solar or batteries, then you still want to think about um, your, your hot water system, um, whether you'd like to move to an electric one to take advantage of, of, of your solar batteries. Um, and, and yeah, um, if, if you've got solar on the roof, then it, it, it makes it even more um, economic to switch to um, efficient electric appliances. Um, so, so if you've got a, uh, if if you if you've got gas appliances, then as well as paying for the gas, you're also paying for the daily supply charge to to have a gas uh, connection, which is often around a dollar a day. So, if you're staying in the home for a decade, say, then that's a few thousand dollars um, that you would save if you could eliminate that gas daily supply charge by consolidating. Uh, just all, all your energy use over to electricity. So th that, that can pay for a fair bit of appliances um, by, by saving on that daily supply charge. So yeah, th th think about switching over to um, electricity for, for cooking, uh, hot water and heating and make your best use of, of that solar. But, but the other key takeaways for solar and batteries would be, yep, solar is a very good deal. Um, in most cases, assuming you've got a nice sunny roof and you're staying in your house for a while. Um, 
uh, batteries, uh, think about your reasons. What, why, you, why are you looking for a battery? So if, if uh, blackout uh, backup is important for you or energy independence or um, helping with that uh, grid transition, um, then yeah, battery might, might be a good idea. And, and you do get some, some bill savings as well to, to um, uh, help out. So it's normally a comb combination of reasons why people would, would want to install a battery. Um, do your research with batteries. Um, there's, there's a couple of uh, guides that we've uh, mentioned there that you can find on, on the AEF website. And you can always call our, our advisors or um, uh, uh, contact them on, on the website as well. And yeah, all the information on the bulk buy, including prices, is, is at this, this website here. And um, yeah, you, you can just uh, ask, ask for a quote through that site. All right, I guess we can move on to questions. Thanks, Andrew. So I'll, I'll, it's Belinda here, everyone. I'm, I'm answering, typing in questions um, with my camera off. I do have some live questions here for you, Andrew, and also one that was put in the chat. So I might ask you first the one that was put in the chat so we know that's covered, and then I'll pop the live ones up on the screen for you. So the first um, question is, do your batteries support SMA inverters? Uh, okay, SMA inverters. Uh, so that's a German brand. Um, uh, been been a popular inverter in the market for a long time. Um, so it's a standard. Most of them are standard solar inverters. We, the, the ones which have been installed uh, on existing solar systems. I might throw over to Anthony to to talk about how how the the batteries and being offered in the bulk buy can can uh, co coexist and uh, cooperate with with an SMA inverter? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, unfortunately, we don't we don't supply SMA inverters. Um, but for the, the for the three inverters that we have, where we've got, say, Solus, um, Fronius inverter from Austria, and then we've got Solar Edge as a hybrid uh, inverter, um, there's no issue there with um, the Alpha ESS compatible compatibility. Um, in most cases, most a lot, of the, a lot of the inverters, the solar inverters that are, are used regularly for residential installations, they are all compatible with a lot of the batteries on the market. And you, you'll typically find that most solar companies, including ours, are not, are not going to provide solutions that are not going to follow all the way through for you. So if your intention is to start as a solar home this year, you know, get yourself some uh, results over spring, summer and autumn, and then next year you're looking at a battery, um, the last thing you want to find out is that the solar company can't support you on that. So uh, most companies now are, uh, have got solar inverters, solar panels and battery storage that is all compatible for installation now or retrofit later. Mm. Yeah, I, from, from the question, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing this is someone who has an old solar system um, yeah. existing with an SMA inverter. Um, so, so, so in that case, um, either of those batteries could could be added on, uh, no problems, right? Potent potentially, I mean, we, it would be easy enough to find out and get an answer for the homeowner. Naturally, the Tesla will will bolt on straight away. It, it seems to consume everything it finds. But yet, in some in some cases with existing customers, we would just go back to one of our engineers and they would get that information. We'd let them know straight away. Great, thanks, thanks, Anthony. Um... All right, uh, I guess I'll just um, pick some of these uh, questions in the Q&A to um, answer, um, but, but Belinda, if you'd like to direct anything specific. Yes, thank you. In. So um, the question from Frank, what is the guaranteed life of the panels and inverter? And what is the reduction in efficiency for the Trina panels over that lifetime? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. We, we get asked that regularly at the moment and you'll find that all all the solar companies now at the all solar companies with integrity are using products that have high efficiency and high you know industry expected warranties for their products so with the trina panels that currently the the product warranty is 15 years uh what and in, in that they also offer a 25 year uh, performance uh, guarantee as well. So what that means is by the time you get to 
the end of 25 years, they guarantee that you'll get a certain amount of efficiency drop over that 25 years, but they might put a figure and say, at the end of year 25, you might be looking at say 83.9% instead of today at 100%. Um, most panel manufacturers uh, provide a performance warranty for their product as well. Um, in the inverters that we have, the, the Solus inverter is what they call a five plus five um, warranty. So the first five years um, is covered by Trina and then the, the second five, you can actually apply for a second five years and increase it to 10 years. There's a small fee involved with that. Um, and that includes, um, that includes everything, cover, covers the product completely. Also from us, you also get, um, the AEF customers also get a 10 year installation warranty as well. So if there was anything related to the installation of the system, you're also well covered in that. Right. Thanks. Thanks a lot for that, Anthony. Um, hopefully that that covers the uh, the question. But we also have have access to to all the spec sheets, of course, um, with with all the warranty details. So um, uh, you could you could um, get in contact with our energy advisors at the AEF, and we can help you out with all of that. Um, uh, there's an interesting one here. Is there a limit on the size of a solar system, e.g., not more than six kilowatts? Now we we actually did have a meeting with United Energy uh, towards the start of this project to um, uh, just talk about what, what's the existing situation and whether there's any changes that might be in the works there. Um, and they're, they're actually more generous than a lot of the other um, installers, uh, sorry, the, the other poles and wires companies um, um, around the state, because there's, there's five different ones in different parts of Victoria. Um, and they, they allow up to 10 kilowatts on, on a single phase. I hope I'm remembering this correctly. No, that's correct. Yeah, great. And, and um, their, their um, process for um, uh, uh, approving an installation seems fairly, fairly simple as well. So um, Beyond simple, Andrew. <laughs> I, I was being a bit, a bit, a bit generous, maybe. <laughs> no, well, we've got in Victoria in the five networks. We've got two. We call them solar-friendly networks. One is where you are is United, and then up north we've got Gemini. And when homeowners are doing that research on solar, you, you seem to run into that system size six point six kilowatts all the time. The great thing about down the peninsula is you can start at thirteen point two kilowatts if you want. Yes, that's right. Uh, that's thirteen point two kilowatts of panels on a ten kilowatt inverter. Correct. Yeah, correct. And 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 that's if you've got a normal electricity supply uh, single phase. If, if you've got a more heavy duty supply into your home, then yeah, that triples it. So typically, we we if we meet a customer who's got a, a larger property down the peninsula on three phase, you know they're 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 looking for a thirty nine point nine kilowatt system, ten kilowatts per phase, and United is really supportive of this yeah yeah that's right so so yeah um you the the limits are, are really quite big which is which is great uh just just one thing to be aware of though is is that it, if you do put on, on a big system um and especially if if a lot of your neighbors also have uh solar then uh there is a chance that um like at sunny times um when when people aren't using much electricity um, all of those uh, big solar systems are trying to push power into the into the poles and wires, which uh, may get a bit stressed out. Um, and um, your solar inverter might actually say, "Oh, okay, um, I'm causing a problem. I'm, I need to back off." So th this would be something to to talk about. Um, uh, I, ideally, you could get a solar installer um, to. Um, have a look at this when they're doing a site visit for a quote. Um, but it's just an issue to be aware of. If, if you do go for a really big system, then uh, it's it's a bit more likely to run into those issues than if you put a solar smaller system on. Um, all right, how about the, uh, let's do a reverse cycle heating, heating and cooling question. Um, uh, so how does ducted reverse cycle heating and cooling compare efficiency and price uh, with, I guess, non-ducted reverse cycle units. So, so, so ducted one, you, 
you may see them with that big unit up up on the up on the rooftop, for example. Um, uh, and then you've got air ducts uh, through the ceiling normally um, out to grills in in uh, different rooms in the house. Um, so so those are big, powerful systems. Um, uh, their efficiency is usually not that great as as a unit itself. And then you also have a fair bit of electricity consumption just to drive the fan to, to force the air uh, through the ducts and th uh, through the grills and uh, into the rooms and then um, uh, under the cracks in the doors or out, out through the windows. And so, so, so the air has to go somewhere. Um, and, and also it's, it's, it's putting in air at the, at, at, at the start of the duct. So if we're talking summer, then it's putting in cold air by the time it comes out the grill, it's not quite so cold anymore, um, because the as it goes through the duct in the you know fifty degree um, uh, ceiling cavity, um, the the insulation in the duct is reasonably thin. So so as the air goes through, it's it's actually losing some of its cool, so it's warming up a bit. Um, so yeah, the efficiency is not fantastic. Um, the, the other option is a um, uh, split system, like the one we had in the picture, we just got an indoor unit and it just has some thin pipes that go through the wall and down to an outdoor unit. So, so that avoids all of those issues with ducts. Um, and, and also there, um, especially with the smaller systems, um, their, their efficiency is, uh, is really good. So um, we'd normally recommend if possible to, to go for split systems. You can get multi splits where you get one outdoor unit connected to several indoor units, so so that's handy to avoid having a you know a row of um, outdoor uh, compressor units in your in your rose bed. Um, um, so yeah, but look with with some floor plans um, when you've got lots and lots of rooms uh, in the house that, that you want to heat and cool, then um, ducted may maybe the way to go, or you can mix and match, have a bit of both even. Um, oh, and price, uh, yeah, if you're doing a lot of rooms, then you, you may find that a ducted system uh, becomes a bit more uh, cheaper to, to buy up front. But yeah, over time, it, if you look at the full lifespan of the, of, you know, 10, 15 years, 20 years, then you you probably find that the um, uh, split systems would would come out a long way ahead because you're not going to pay so much to to run them. Oh, sorry, uh, split system the reclaim heat pump uh, compared to a chromogen. <coughs> oh, okay. Um, I'm I'm a little confused here. So Michael said, referring to the, my previous question, by split system, I mean the reclaim heat pump compared to a chromogen um, uh, heat pump hot water system. Um, okay, so if we're talking about um, uh, heat pump hot water systems, okay, so, so, so there's two different types. Um, the, the, the one we had in the picture in the presentation has, has the, the tall water tank and, and then the compressor unit beside it. So that's called a split system uh, heat pump hot water. Um, there are other units that have have a tall water tank and 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 they have a compressor unit on top of the water tank um, built into it to a single unit um, so the, the the highest efficiency heat pumps on the market um, use carbon dioxide as the refrigerant gas which which operates at high pressure and and they're, they're really good quality japanese made systems um, of which the reclaim energy is one and there are no units that that uh, use that high efficiency um, um, CO2 refrigerant um, all built into one unit. Um, so uh, there there are some some uh, some all, all in one inbuilt uh, heat pump hot water systems that are pretty efficient, but but not quite as efficient as the um, as the reclaim energy. Yeah. So you've you've got a choice of which which way to go, but um, if it was me, I'd try and go for a high efficiency, high quality system for for, for a heat pump. Um, if if you speak to plumbers, they'll, they'll they'll often 
say, oh no, heat pumps are no good. They're um, they're uh, noisy and unreliable. Um, but if 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 you ask them a couple of questions and say, well, okay, which which models are you referring to? What which ones have you had experience with? Um, you normally find that they're they're talking about the uh, the cheaper older brands um, with with a with a good quality heat pump. Um, yeah, they they work really well. Okay, um, we don't seem to have any questions left. Um, there's, there's just one more there, Andrew. Um, would heat pumps be suitable for indoor pool heating purposes? Yeah, thanks. They they certainly are. Yeah, and there there are um, heat pump uh, pool heaters uh, for sale on the market. Um, so I, I, I'd probably recommend them as, as a pool heating option, especially if you've got solar panels on the roof. And yeah, you it'd be group, it'd be good to put in a big solar system in that case because um, heating a pool obviously uses can use a fair bit of energy. I mean it's the, the volume of water is so much bigger than a hot water tank, but on the other hand, you, you're not raising it by as many degrees. But um, yeah, you, they can still draw a, a lot of energy. Um, your, your alternatives would, would be um, those black plastic tubing type um, systems that you see on people's roofs that just, just work like solar thermal, just um, the sun's heat uh, directly uh, heating up the water going through, through the tube. Um, that's a valid option as well, but um, I think these days um, you'd get better value out of your, your roof space by um, putting uh, solar panels on there to generate electricity. Um, so, uh, and your other option, of course, is a, is a gas-fired um, uh, pool heater. Um, uh, so that would probably be cheaper to buy up front. But yeah, you'd have to look at the running costs over the lifespan of the appliance. Um, uh, gas isn't as cheap as it, as it used to be. And um, then there's obviously the um, uh, environmental implications of gas as well. So yeah, um, the, the heat pump uh, pool systems seem to work pretty well. Um, uh, they can draw a fair bit of power. So you, you'd have to look at, yeah, how much, um, your, what sort of strain that would put on your existing uh, uh, wiring in your house and uh, how all that's going to work out. Thank you, Andrew. Another question has come through, another couple actually. I am, Bev asks, uh, she currently has a solar with gas backup hot water system. Is she correct in assuming that solar panels for electricity would be totally separate to that system? That's right. Yeah. So, so a solar hot water system, um, uh, it, it actually works like the, um, what I was just describing with that black plastic um, um, uh, pipes on the roof for, for pool heating. Um, it's, it's, it's solar thermal. It's, it's just the heat of the sun um, heating up um, for, for, for hot water for showers and things. It, you, you either have a, a flat panel like with glass on the front and, and, and you've got uh, water or um, some type of uh, liquid flowing through behind it. So it's, so it's just the heat directly heating up the liquid. Or if it's not a flat panel, then it'll be evacuated tubes where you see these rows of cylinders up on the roof. Um, that's, that's a slightly more efficient way to, um, uh, uh, a slight, slightly more efficient version of, of solar thermal hot water, um, especially in uh, uh, colder temperatures. Um, but yeah, those are dedicated to hot water. That's, that, that's the only thing they can do. Um, they're, they're, they're quite efficient at what they do um, for, for a given area of roof space. Um, they, they can harvest quite a lot of heat and put that heat into your water tank. But if it's a sunny day, your water tank might be already up to its full, up to its temperature by lunchtime. And then the rest of the day, that roof space is doing nothing. Um, you you just it's just trying to heat up more water, and and so you you might actually um, have a bit of steam coming off or uh, something like that. So um, uh, that's that's dedicated to to hot water. Um, and as you've mentioned, they also need to have a, a booster or, or a backup water heater as well. 
because if, if, if you have a string of cloudy days, mm. then you're not going to get enough heat off the, um, uh, off that solar thermal system to, to heat up your hot water tank. Um, so that's, that's when the backup uh, cuts in like a, a little gas instantaneous uh, water heater. So um, if you get solar panels, then that's, that's different. They're, they're just generating electricity. That, that's totally separate. But um, just, just on that solar thermal hot water system. Um, so uh, that's, uh, that's a valid option for, for hot water. Um, we, we don't focus on them so much these days um, because um, uh, heat pumps um, uh, have, have matured and uh, the, the, good, the good heat pump systems are uh, reliable. They're actually cheaper than, than a, a good quality solar thermal hot water system. And they don't take up space on your roof. And you don't need a booster. It's, it's, it's just one, one water heater does everything. So um, you, you, you avoid some of those complexities of needing plumbers to get up on the roof and um, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, we, we, we normally advocate heat pumps as a standard sort of suburban option. Um, yeah, the, the, the solar thermal systems have their niches, um, but yeah, we, we see them more of a niche product these days. Thanks, Andrew. And there are just a couple of questions about the nuts and bolts of the bulk buy program. Um, one is, can someone get a discount or rebate on both a heat pump and a split system? And then the other question that's coming through quite regularly is, are the prices on the website showing uh, post rebate or what rebates and are included in that pricing on the website? Okay, yep. I'll answer the second one first. So, so the prices on the website um, it, with solar, they, they include that, um, that federal rebate. The, the one I was saying is, is always available. It's got no eligibility criteria, um, but yeah, they don't include the state government rebate because that, that is only available to a subset of people depending on your income and your and your uh, property value and everything. So yeah, um, and it, with the batteries, same thing. Uh, it, it doesn't include the um, state government rebate for the same reason. And there's, there's no uh, federal rebate on the batteries anyway. Uh, and so what was the other question again, Belinda? About whether um, you can get a discount or rebate on heat pumps and split systems, for example. Right, yeah, with, with the Solar Victoria system, um, I'm pretty sure you can only get one, one um, rebate. Yeah, uh, one, uh, one per person. Yeah. Yep. So you've got, you've got solar PV rebate, you've got the battery rebate, and then the hot water rebate, and they kind of tighten that up and it's one per person. Yeah, that's right. So... So if you're in the market for multiple systems, then you probably want to um, uh, strategically go for the, <laughs> the rebate um, for, for the largest one you can get. And yeah, we, we can advise you on, on that um, across the full range. I'd, I'd say just um, uh, put a call into our um, energy advisors and we can help you uh, work out uh, what's, what's the best way to go. Oh, oh and, but, but in terms of discounts, yeah, um, uh, as part of our bulk buy program, um, our, our suppliers have, have uh, been able to provide discounted prices for Mornington Peninsula uh, residents. And um, yeah, so that's, that's obviously included in, in that price, yes. Is Thank that you. all the questions, Belinda? I believe it's all the questions, Andrew. Excellent, because it's uh, almost time to finish. So we, we couldn't have planned it better, eh? It's been great. Thank you. All right. Well, I might wrap it up then. So to all the participants, thank you for coming. Uh, to uh, Nikki, uh, massive thanks to Mornington Peninsula Shire for making the whole thing possible. And uh, big thanks to Anthony as well for, for coming along and uh, providing all that uh, expertise on, on the products. So 
thanks everybody have have a great um uh, friday and and weekend and um i uh, hope to uh see you in some form or another into the future thanks everybody thanks. there will be a, a survey at the end of the webinar when you when you um, when I press end, a survey will pop up on your screens. And if you could answer those questions for us, we'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Everybody. Thanks, everybody. Good Thanks, morning. Andrew. Bye. Thanks, Good night, everyone. Bye. <laughs>